my name is Steve. Welcome to Johansson Family Vlog. Today I'd like to take the opportunity to explain how I go ahead and saw my logs. I know it's a little bit different than most other people do it, and I think it's different than anyone I've seen do it on YouTube. So I thought I would take the opportunity to go ahead and show it, and um, we'll go about doing that. So come along. Hope you have a good time. All right, so here's my setup. I have a band sawmill from Hudson Sawmills. It's the Hunter. I do not have a traditional deck. I have rails that I made myself. When I made these rails and put them in the ground, I did not know which sawmill I was going to get. I knew though that if I made them about three feet apart, I would be okay. Um, it turns out that the Hudson sawmill that I did get was only about two feet apart for the frame, the carriage. And so I had to extend the carriage with these bolts right here to make it wide enough to fit the track that I had made. No big deal. When I go to sell this mill, I can just put the original wheels back on and anyone that wants the original track can purchase it and use it or they can make their own track. This track is cemented into the ground. But I do not have a traditional deck. Instead of a deck, I have basically two piers and they're made out of cement. There's one there. And there's another one here, they're roughly nine or 10 feet apart. I knew when I made this sawmill or made this deck, the rails that I would want to be sawing very long logs um, to make A-frame, to make the, the, the timbers for the A-frame. And so I made the, I made my rails or my deck 24 feet long, knowing that the sawmill would have to sit on each end, hoping I could saw 22 foot boards. Turns out I have to really press it to get 22. So it's it's pretty easy to get 20 and a half to 21 foot logs out of this, timbers out of this. Um, but it, it's, I can I can get 22 foot logs, 20 foot, two foot timbers. If I get, put the log underneath, actually get it underneath, right next to the blade there. If I get it underneath here and then go all the way to the end and barely get it so it cuts out the other end, I can get 22 foot logs, but it's not worth it. Also, I put the dogs that came with the sawmill on it. They are too weak. Even if they were on the original track system or deck that came with this, they would be very, very weak for these this weight of logs. Um, instead, I use home, homemade hand-cut dogs just for, the, just for the log to sit in. And I'll show you how I use them as I go. But the log is sitting in the dogs that I have created, chalks, probably better chalks is a better word. This log right here is probably about 21 feet long. It is probably one of the best logs that I've cut on my property thus far. So that's why I'm using this log to do this video. One of the reasons I set it up this way is because I knew I would have my tractor, my LSMT 235E hydrostatic, and even my tractor with the forks. I know they don't sound that important, but to me, they're incredibly important. You can do so much with forks. And so I placed the logs onto the track with the tractor and the forklifts. I don't do anything to the log manually, except for at the very, at the, when I roll it once, I, um, I use, I have to roll it off the tractor forks to get the first, the one roll on it. So I'll talk about that really quick, how I prep the log. Um, once I get it up there, I check its height. I guess let me go show you how I do that. I'll get the stuff and come right back. So really simple, I have a stick and a tape measure. I put the stick across the track, under the end of the board at each end. I grab my tape measure and I measure the usable wood. So this one right here measures from, not counting sap wood, we've got about four to 17. 4 to 16 and so when I go down to the other end let's just do that now when I go down to the other end and I put my board same board across the tracks underneath the end of the log and I measure again 
I'm checking to make sure that my usable space is within the range of the other side. That down there was 4 to 16, this is 7 to 16, and so I'm perfect. I wouldn't worry about getting this perfectly level. All I care is that the thin end, the range of the thin end, fits inside of the range of the wider, thicker end at the bottom of the tree. So as long as that's okay, I go ahead. If it's not okay, I try to lift it up with my forks. I'll lift it up and I'll add some spacers. So you can see here, I've got two spacers underneath that this chalk because this one wasn't quite high enough for me to get the usable space I wanted when I made it. All right, so that's how I prep the log. Also, I have to be careful. I limb the log to make sure that it's not gonna get stuck. But you can see, if it were too far off to the side, the sawmill wouldn't slide all the way down. And if it was too far off this way, the sawmill wouldn't slide all the way down. And so I have to make sure it's free of de debris. Something like this. If it were sticking out just more to the right, would obviously stop the track, stop the carriage. The carriage uprights would run into that, and then I would hit. I have to stop and cut it off in the middle of sawing. So I watch out for the stuff. I also make sure that my track is clear of little limbs sitting there. This one would be fine, but I'll just grab it. Okay, so log is prepped. Okay, I just want to say a little bit about how I saw the log. I think I do that a little bit differently too. Um, I don't make a full cant. I actually saw the top off the log and then I get what I can until I get to eight inches. I do make an eight inch cant. Um, when I get to eight inches to where I want to have the bottom of my log, I then make a second cut at eight inches. And so I make the top and the bottom cut without turning the log. Once I've got that eight inch slab is what it would be, I then pick it up with my forklift. I get rid of the extra that was throw off and then I remove all the throw off and I use the tractor to help me rotate it. So in other words, I pick up the slab with the tractor. I bend the forks down until it gets close to where it would slide. Then I set it back on my chocks and then I manually have to push it up so that it makes a 90 degree turn. And that's the only turn I do on my saw milling is one 90 degree turn. And then I saw off the top again once it's made that 90 degree turn. And from there I have a cant, but it doesn't have all four sides. It just has three. The other bottom side is purposely left rounded so that it can fit inside of my chalks. So because these logs are so long and so heavy, I want to physically handle them, or move them as little as possible. Fortunately, I do have a forklift. And so what I do, see if I can get this one handed. So I set it on the forks and then I go ahead and take it away that way whether it's my off cuts or my slabs or my boards. Try to use it.
So I now have my eight inch slab. I have my off cut. That was my very first cut. It's on the tractor right there on the forks. I have my inch and three quarter slab that was soft after that. And then I have another off cut on the bottom that I'll just turn into firewood because at this point it's too hard to turn into anything. So Take it up, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to measure each end now with my tape measure to make sure that the ranges are within side of each other. Um, if not, I'll pick it up with my fork truck and add shims to move it up or down on one side. Um, then I'm going to make my off cut, and after that I'll just make successive cuts for whatever thickness I need. Okay, one last thing I have to do before I can make all my successive cuts, because I am going to be making successive cuts, as I take the cuts and go farther down the board, it's, the log is going to get weaker and weaker and it's, it's going to start to bow, because I only have it supported on two piers. And so I'm not going to lift it up at all, but I'm going to take some blocks and set them underneath the ends of each, uh, each end, so that it won't settle. So as you can see, I now have my eight inch cant. I mean, I guess maybe it's not a full can, it's only cut on three sides. The bottom side for me is purposely left rounded so it sits in those chalks. And um, I think rotating a 22 foot log once is way easier than rotating it three times. So I'm going to go now and make my successive cuts. I'll cut all the way down at the thickness I want. Mark my tape measure, raise it up, back all the way down and just go through kind of like a circular pattern like that until I get down to my chalks and I can't make any more cuts.
quite a it's been a couple months since I started this video. Um, I've done a lot of milling since then. I just wanted to show a few things um, that I've noticed along the way. So um, one of the first things I've noticed is that um, if you don't have enough lube running, enough water running on the blade, they go dull pretty fast. Um, so you want a steady stream, you know, more than a trickle. You want a steady, constant stream. Um, and what's what's water? You know, price of water with a little bit of, you know, soap or, or um, pine salt on there. What's that cost, right? So be um, be generous with your with your lube. I guess would be one comment. Um, another thing I noticed is I was definitely having um, issues with the precision. Um, the the original winch I had that came from the manufacturer from Hudson Sawmill. Um, I'm not happy with it at all. Um, it had a big spindle on it, you know, and um, I'm sure that made it so that it goes up and down quicker, but it also made it so that the increments in between clicks were, were way too large, um, not as near as precise as it should be. And eventually the, the double action on that, because you could just turn it one way and it would click, and if you pushed hard enough the other way, it would, it would release. It was, that's it's a double action. Um, eventually that gave out, and literally as I would mill across the board, it would... It would dive I mean and so at that point then I I opened it up and I don't know if they're called thrust bearing washers or whatever that are in there that make that work right they were kind of worn and smushed and I said I don't I don't like this anyways so I went out and just bought a regular heavy-duty winch um, let's just show it really quick right here just a 65 bucks heavy-duty winch and you can see the spindle on that is really tiny and so I get much smaller increments than when I use my when I use my scale and so I can get I find that I can get much more precise and um, with this is only a single action winch you know you, you flip this to let it go down and then you click it clicks you know you put it back to click it and um, it's not any slower and um, I know now that it's not going to dive ever it's just it won't re that really literally will not release um, yeah and just watch your blades if you if you have to start pushing them I guess one one way I realized too that I wasn't using enough lube was um, I would get um, pieces of sawdust still stuck, still stuck right here. It would it would build up, you know, just in front of the the guide there, you know, um, and that was that that meant that they were still going through, they were going back through in the cut, and so that was I mean I could probably go back now actually and um, check a few blades. And see which ones have that in the I think in the gullet maybe that's what it's called um, have that sawdust stuck in the gullet because that meant I was running them without enough lube and maybe they would still you know come back to where life a little bit without even having to sharpen them um, so I just wanted to give a few just a little bit of update um, it's definitely more precise now with the with a different wench I'm much happier with that um, be be generous with your lube I guess be very generous with your lube is, is one of the biggest things I would suggest. Oh, and then the other thing, the Hudson Sawmill comes with a tensioner. I'm not sure they all do, but this one does. Um, it's down here. So there's the bolt for it. Um, so I loosen that up every time I'm done. So I completely loosen it so there's no tension on the belt. Um, they just kind of, it, lets, it makes it last longer. Um, and then I tighten it back up when I use it. And... Um, I tighten it to what the manufacturer recommends, but after about 20 board feet, it's not there anymore. And so um, I highly recommend checking your tensioner, you know, probably every 20, 25 board feet when you first start milling. And then once you see that it's not really going anywhere, they could check it like once every 100 board feet, you know, if, if it's not really, if you don't have to tighten it when you go check it. But I would check it, you know, every 20 feet. Maybe even your first pass, even if that's just 10 feet, your first pass, I would I would check your tensioner a lot because I noticed that was allowing me to get wavy boards too. By if I didn't keep an eye on that and it got loose, then I would get wavy boards, and that's that's just as bad as um, having a dull blade. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's taken me a little while to put it together, but I hope it's instructional. And um, if you like it, don't forget to thumbs up. Or if you don't like it, thumbs down. Either way, it helps me out. And um, don't forget to subscribe. helps us out. And I hope you have a great day. Best of luck, Millen. That's that. Mm -hmm.